Then we have this Doha round. So Doha round came in 19, 19, uh, in 2001. And this Doha round is mostly related to the agriculture. Again in Doha round, we have developing countries. We have developed countries. They are against each other. Developed countries headed by USA. Developing countries headed by India. Although India got backing of G77 countries, these poor countries are there. Also a backing of G33 countries and developed countries headed by USA. The major problem is related to the agriculture, the opening of the agriculture market. Because in case of uh, USA or the developed countries, the agriculture is well established. There only 4 or 5 percent of the population is dependent on agriculture. So the per capita income of the US farmer is much more in comparison to the per farmer income, per capita income of Indian farmer. In India, 49 to 50% of the employment is given by the agriculture, but only 17% of, uh, of the GDP is being contributed by the agriculture. So there is a huge gap. Indian farmers are very poor. So if you will allow this foreign countries to sell their agriculture commodities in India at cheap price, so Indian farmer is going to perish. To avoid such situation, there are lots of restrictions, quota system, license system and Indian agriculture market or this developing countries agriculture market has not been opened. Even though LPG reforms we accepted, but LPG is there except for agriculture. But it's not like the US market or the developed countries, they have allowed, they have opened their market. No, still they have continued with the Textile, the quota system is still valid in textile. We have in four African countries which export a lot of textile, but they are not allowed to be imported by USA because that is going to affect their farmers. So on the one hand, they want to open the developing countries border, but on the other hand, it was a news that the protectionist approach of USA that within USA earlier they were open. But now when cheap labor is available in the developing country, so now they want to guard it. How they are guarding it? They are giving incentive to those companies who are not outsourcing their work. Just like BPO is there. So rather than involving a US citizen in the BPO industry, these developed countries, they started outsourcing that work to the developing country. But now that protectionist approach, it has started coming into the developed country. So under that uh, Doha round, it is related to agriculture. They also have some protection related to textile. They also have some protection related to the cotton. The cotton is also a major problem. So all this is related to Doha round. Under Doha round, we have special safeguard mechanism. So what is there in special safeguard mechanism is Suppose India is importing, India is producing wheat and this SSM is related to agriculture commodities. Suppose the price of wheat in India is 20 rupees and if you will import then also it is 18 to 22 rupees. It is between 18 to 22 rupees depending on the quality of the wheat. So it is not a problem. But suppose internationally the prices decrease. So India can live by countervailing duty. India can live by anti-dumping duty. But see the difference between this. Countervailing duty is levied only if this foreign country, they are giving any subsidy for the production of wheat. But suppose these countries, they are not giving any subsidy for production of wheat. So you cannot live by countervailing duty. CBD can be levied only if you are dumping it. It means in their market the price is 15 rupees. Sorry, in their market the price is 25 rupees and they are dumping in 18 to 22 rupees. Then you can levy anti dumping. But think that because of huge production or whatsoever reason, in their market itself the price becomes 18. Earlier the price was 25 and now suddenly the price becomes 18 rupees. So no CVD and no anti-dumping can be levied. In that case, still you need some protection. 
for the Indian farmers. In that case, you can trigger out special safeguard mechanism. But the problem is what should be the trigger? Whether there is a decrease in prices of 10% or whether there is a decrease in prices by 40%. Developing countries are saying, developing countries means India, headed by India only in Doha round. India is saying if there is a decrease in price by 10%, then we will put restrictions. Restrictions means either we will stop it or we will put some import duty. Developed countries, they are saying that this trigger price should be 40%. If there is a decrease in the price of 40%, import price of 40%, this price of 40%, then only special safeguard mechanism should be initiated. So, this is what first contradiction related to special safeguard mechanism. The second one is agreement on agriculture. The second provision, the second contention is agreement on agriculture. <clears throat> this Doha round is highly relevant from exam perspective. These three topics, last three topics, compulsory license, this Doha round and National Food Security Act issue. Agreement on agriculture is there. <clears throat> which is nothing but it is based on the prices of 1986 to 89. So, under agreement on agriculture, there are three pillars. First one is the domestic support. The subsidies, different, different types of subsidies given by the domestic country. Then we have export subsidy. And the third one is market access. So these are the three pillars of agreement on agriculture. First one is domestic support. Under this domestic support, we have three types of subsidies. Green box, amber box, I don't have these different, different color pen, and blue box. Now blue is there. So, <coughs> agreement on agriculture says you have to remove all these types of subsidies except green box. Green box subsidy, it is like you are educating the farmers, you are training the farmers, you are increasing the irrigation areas of the farmers, you are making some canals and all. So, all such type of subsidy is known as green box subsidy. It is allowed. No restriction is there on this green box subsidy. Then we have the amber box subsidy. These subsidy, they are market distorting. Just like we have minimum support price. So, minimum support price is there, which is an example of product subsidy, not production subsidy. So, if product subsidy is there, so if you are producing 100 kg in this one hectare, the actual subsidy that you are getting is less. If you will produce 1000 kg, then your subsidy will be more. If you will produce 10,000 kg, then your subsidy is much more. So, it means you are incentivizing to produce more and more. And when more wheat will be produced in India, more supply of wheat will be there. And when more supply will be there, there are chances that India will export this wheat. And when we will export this wheat, so that is going to affect the other countries' farmer. So, this is what the amber box subsidy, this market distorting subsidies. It's not like you have to eliminate this amber box subsidy, but there should be restriction. That restriction or condition is developing countries can give 10% such subsidy. And developed countries, they can give only 5% of such subsidy. And the last one is the blue box subsidy. The blue box subsidy is very few countries they use it. It's like some Scandinavian countries are using. If you will keep your land fallow, if you will not grow anything for one year, the government will give you some amount of money to make your agriculture more sustainable. Some countries are giving, very few countries are giving this blue box subsidy. But if you are not growing anything, you are not distorting the market. So again, there is no restriction on the blue box subsidy. There is a restriction on amber box subsidy, 5%. Developed countries, up to 10% developing countries can give. Blue box subsidy, no restriction.
then we have the export subsidy export subsidy means you are subsidizing the products and then you are exporting so it is not allowed then we have the market taxes market taxes means liberalize the <coughs> import of all these agriculture commodities so these are the three pillars of agreement on agriculture the question can be asked which of the following is not a pillar of agreement on agriculture domestic support export subsidy and market taxes these are the three pillars of agreement on agriculture then we have the peace clause the peace clause says let's suppose one country is violating any of this it means a country is giving a subsidy of more than 10 percent then the other country can go against you in the dispute settlement board and this dispute settlement board will decide but suppose a country is in transition two years three years is required to shift it suppose at right now you are violating but maybe you know that after two to three years you will not violate so during such transition period you can sign peace clause under peace clause you have to make your functioning more transparent it means you have to share your information with the wto directorate but nobody can go against you for this two to three years the time duration of peace clause was four years so at max you can avail peace clause relaxation for four years india also signed peace clause in the issue of national food security act in 2013 we signed it then we have what is the national food security act issue that is going on so national food what is national food security act under the agriculture chapter we'll discuss in detail but national food security act is 66 percent of the indian population it means 75 percent rural and 50 percent of the urban population will get some subsidized wheat rice pulses and all so if government has to give such huge amount of wheat and rice so government has to procure so government has to procure from whom government will procure from the farmers through fci this is fci or the government of india whatever government of india dictate fci has to do it whatever will the targets how much to procure at what price to procure all this is decided by government of india the ministry will decide and fci is just an implementing body so when a lot of procurement will be there and lot of supply will be through fci and that too at a subsidized price one two three rupees so if the price will be so less so the demand of all these items of wheat rice and all in the market suppose this is market and these are the beneficiaries 66 percent and 34 percent for example 66 67 percent is there so this 33 34 percent <coughs> maybe there can be chances of leakages very much possible or these 66 percent can export it so the international market will be affected by the national food security act of india that is why countries like usa pakistan indonesia they are against the national food security act of india because when the government is procuring so government is procuring at minimum support price and this msp comes under the amber box subsidy and amber box subsidy we have a restriction of only 10 percent of the subsidy you can give but this 10 percent of what this is a question in newspaper you can read 10 percent 5 percent most of the books it is like 10 percent is out for developing country 5 percent for the developed country but have you ever questioned it 10 percent of what 10 percent of the external reference price there is a reference which was mentioned which was there on the average price of 1986 to 89 and that is there in the agreement on agriculture and by taking the average they said for both wheat and rice almost same it was 265 dollars at that time and 265 dollars at that time it was equivalent to 3500 rupees now it is almost it was there in <coughs> 1989 in 2016 it can be as high as 13,000 or 14,000. 
as per the present exchange rate it can be 15000 also because right now the dollar is 65 66 take it as 70 so external reference price so you can give a subsidy of 10% of this erp it means 3500 the reason is the second problem what india is saying india is saying 10% of our currency we can give as the subsidy and the developed countries or this USA and all they are saying that you can give 10% of this particular old conversion it means only 350 rupees you can give and India is saying if it is 10% of this let us take the advantage of our currency exchange so what India is saying we can give 1300 rupees as the subsidy and the developed countries they are saying that whatever was fixed during that time when the agreement on agriculture was signed that time of exchange rate should be used and accordingly India should be allowed only 350 rupees. So India is facing a problem India is breaching the 10% limit only for rice. India is not breaching for wheat or all other agriculture commodities but only rice is the problem we are breaching it for rice. The second one is different reduction commitments for different different countries. We discussed there are three pillars. So these are the three pillars. So under agreement on agriculture what is mentioned that if you are violating any of these three pillars domestic support or the export subsidy you are giving or you are not giving the market access. In 1989, we were facing that exchange rate crisis. So, India said BOP crisis is there. We will not give you market access. We were not involved in any export subsidy. And go government of India was not breaching any of these three types of subsidy. So, nothing was applicable on government of India. And because it means government of India was doing good, Indian economy was very well. But now India government has to face the negative consequences of our good past. We did good but now we have to face the consequences because there is different reduction commitments for different different countries. It is like suppose we are saying all these agriculture commodities we are producing. This is wheat, this is rice. This is pulses, core cereals. Within this wheat, rice, pulses also we can further divide. Core cereals we can further divide. So now our commitment for us the target is the individual 10% should be there. It means 350 rupees. We discussed 3500. So we can give at max subsidy of 350 rupees for wheat. Similarly we can give at max subsidy of 350 rupees for rice we can give at max whatever the ERP of core cereal 10% of that pulses 10% of that this is applicable for India but had there any country which had committed any of these things or which allowed any of these things for them the commitment is different what they are saying the full agriculture thing will be counted as one and 10% of that agriculture output Suppose India's agriculture output is, we said 265 million metric ton. That rupee equivalent of that is the maximum thing. Similarly, for one for any country which was violating any of these three things, so that country has accepted AOA, they have signed, they have amended something. So for these countries, the overall limit is there. It means, what is the negative thing is? When I said that India is breaching only for rice, 350 rupees, it means if we are not giving 350 rupees for wheat, suppose we are giving only 150 rupees. So the remaining 200 rupees, we cannot divert to rice. But this is not in case of other countries. If you are giving for wheat, suppose you are giving 150 rupees subsidy for rice, you are giving 350 rupees subsidy but this 200 rupees will be converted so now you are allowed to give a subsidy of 550 rupees because overall 10 percent is there but in case of india it is dual overall also you have to fulfill 10 percent 
and product specific also you have to fulfill 10% so this is like you committed something good in past for that you have to face the punishment because in 1989 we were not violating anything so we didn't sign it so but now we didn't sign it we means we didn't accept it any of these things we even we have not implemented any of these things because we said bop crisis cannot sign it was allowed in aoa then export subsidy we were not giving so we have not done any changes domestic support we were not violating any of these three subsidies so we have not amended anything but now we have to face the negative consequence of this thing because for india this one 200 rupees of less subsidy given to wheat cannot be converted into this rice so if you are breaching rice it means somebody will go against you in the dispute settlement board so this is what the different reduction commitment the next one is the due inflation clause the due inflation clause is inflation should be counted at that time it was 3500 and the 10% of 3500 is 350 rupees the developing country faces a lot of inflation in india the rate of inflation is on an average it is 6 7 or 8% for last 10 years for last decade in case of developed countries the inflation can be negative or it is as low as 0.5% 1% so for india this price has highly increased and when this price will increase so 10% of this will increase in aoa it is mentioned due inflation will be counted when you are counting this 10% so india is saying because it is mentioned in aoa we can increase it as per the inflation figures suppose it comes out to be 6000 so india said from 1990s to 2016 there has been this much of the inflation so now 600 rupees we can give as a subsidy but the developed countries they are saying automatically you will not get the 600 rupees or automatically due inflation clause will not be applicable you have to take a permission from the wto board then only you can take this due inflation clause so this is the third major issue between developed country uh, india and the other countries headed by usa so first we discuss erp india wants to use to convert the present dollar value but they are saying it should be the old rupee value 3500 only uska 10% you can use the second one is different reduction commitment for india it is product specific 10% of this product as well as overall agriculture output but the other countries which were committed some mistake which were committed something wrong during that era and they have done some changes so they are allowed for only total thing but in case of india it is individual also and total also then the due inflation clause india said automatically we can use because it is mentioned in aoa the due inflation will be uh, the due inflation can be taken by the uh, economy while calculating that 10% of the erp then at last we have trade facilitation agreement under that trade facilitation agreement it is a good agreement but it is not that good for developing country trade facilitation agreement is to decrease the red tapeism that bureaucratic hurdle which the developed countries are facing when they are exporting the items so on indian ports so first of all indian ports are not much connected the connectivity is not that good they are not much available online the information is not available online the e payment services are not there if suppose one uh, importer is there and you have detained the goods so no notification is given to the that particular importer so all these are the bureaucratic hurdles the red tapeism is there so under trade facilitation agreement it is mentioned that all these things will be removed because in developed countries all these things are there because their priority is not poverty their priority is not the infrastructure development of within the country they are already developed they have surplus amount of money so they can use it and their connectivity is already good but in case of india the government has other priorities of course that is going to increase the trade but the government has other priorities as well so when this trade facilitation agreement came india said unless and until there is a resolution of national food security act issue 
we will not sign trade facilitation agreement. And we discuss WTO is a unanimous based organization. Even if a single country it disagrees to any particular agreement, that cannot be signed. So that trade facilitation agreement we used to get some relaxation in the National Food Security Act. The previous government signed peace clause. When you are signing peace clause, it means what? You are accepting the mistake. That yes, I am, I am committing some mistake. Within four years, we will negotiate and we will find out something. So that few, few uh, <coughs> political economists, they criticized the signing of the peace clause of the previous government. But when this government came, they said that if this is the thing, what will happen if no negotiation will take place within four years? Then anybody will go and do dispute settlement board and WTO maybe will give judgment against our National Food Security Act. So, this government said, we will not sign trade facilitation agreement. So, we use this TFA as a bargaining thing. So, when Mr. Narendra Modi and Barack Obama, they sit during that last visit of our Prime Minister, at that time, Modi discussed that we will sign TFA only and only if you will give us an assurance that unless and until NFSA issue is resolved, nobody will go against us. So, that time frame of four years, that has been removed. The USA agreed in the world, the Papa is USA only. So, when the USA agreed, all agreed. So, when USA agreed that NFSA issue, nobody will go against your NFSA issue unless and until it will be resolved. So, that duration of peace clause has extended. That is not exactly peace clause, but the duration has extended without any restriction. Unless and until there is a mutual decision, nobody will go against India in case of NFSA. And that's we also ratified, we also signed the trade facilitation agreement. So, the not signing of TFA was not because TFA is not good for India. It was because we wanted to use TFA as a bargaining thing ultimately to get something different and that thing is the extension of the negotiation of National Food Security Act. So, this National Food Security Act issue is very relevant from exam perspective. This agreement on agriculture or we can say Doha round in Nairobi issue in that Nairobi meet recently of WTO this was very much in news that compulsory license is also much relevant from exam perspective. So, this is what we have related to WTO. Thanks a lot.